Lady Snowblood, very famous Japanese movie. If you haven't watched it yet, you probably should. And it's also very famous for this one obi musubi that is called Koken Musubi. And it's usually worn by the main character when she is going out to kill people. <laughs> I just really love that sentence. I receive regularly requests about how to tie Koken Musubi by yourself and the answer always is it's impossible. And honestly, as a super encouraging kimono teacher, I hate being discouraging and telling people what is impossible with kimono. So I want to change that. And we are starting with Koken Musubi. <laughs> In case you're here for the first time, my name is Billy Matsunaga and I'm a fully trained and certified kimono teacher and stylist. Koken Musubi. I did some research about it. It's definitely not a historical obi musubi and it's really hard to date when it exactly came up. However, today you usually only see it on stage for Jap Japanese theater, traditional theater or traditional dance, which is kabuki or nihon buyo. You barely see it worn by young people on their coming of age ceremony because oh, you should actually try to once request that. All the kimono stylists around you will go crazy because they actually don't know how to do it or they can just look it, make it look nice. I'm very lucky that the kimono school I took my license in focuses heavily on historical and stage dressing. So I had to master Koken Musubi and it took me half a year until I finally got the okay from my teacher to move on to the next Obi Musubi. That's how hard it actually is. This is already, I think about three years ago before I took my teacher's license, which means I am not as good anymore because I'm not practicing at all. So I'm not telling you I'm really good at it. It's just extremely hard to tie because it's a very cool and simple look. And that is a problem because it is so simple. You can't cover up any possible mistakes you m might have done in the beginning when starting to tie the obi. You have to have everything on point right at the beginning when tying koken musubi. And this makes it so extremely hard. Another problem with koken musubi is a problem that we do have with most furisode obi musubi. And you will have to do a little research by yourself on Instagram or Pinterest or whatever is out there. When you look for furisode obi arrangements, you can tell that the most gorgeous ones usually sit on your shoulder and there are also OB arrangements that actually are supposed to look over your shoulder which means tying it by yourself on the front and turning it is impossible because you have a whole arm in your way. Some innovative people came up with something that is called Sugata Makura and I can only recommend this because this makes most super gorgeous obi musubi possible. This one helps you to pre-tie the obi on the floor in front of you and then you just set it on your shoulder. Which means you can make a tsuke obi or also called tsukuri obi by yourself without actually cutting or sewing up the obi. I usually dress myself in furisode and this is what I'm using for it. This is... This is the secret. <laughs> anyway, for koken musubi, you can't use this. Problem is this part here. Koken musubi is usually tied without a obimakura or you make a special obimakura that is just a piece of plastic or paper and very flat. So I thought why not making a DIY and trying to make a sugata makura only for koken musubi. This is how a sugata makura looks like. It has this ring on the bottom and the obimakura on top. Two ties on the sides that are fixed onto the ring with elastics. I'm going to replace my makura part with a koken musubi makura that looks like this. It's a 10 cm, 8.5 cm rectangle. 
For the Sugata Makura, I used this type of panel, plastic panel, that is stiff, but I still can easily cut it with a cutter knife. I traced the ring of the Sugata Makura onto the panel. And in the center of the top, I traced my Koken Musubi Makura. I cut this out and place it onto some cotton fabric that I had still left over from the Demon Slayer Haudi I made for my niece. Can you guess which character this was? I traced it onto the fabric. Follow the fabric in half and pin the two layers together. Then I marked out some seam allowance. Then I pin it a little better together and cut it out. These are the pieces I had so far. I noticed that the Sukata Makura is stuffed on the outside layer. So I took some quilting cotton that I had left from my kimono padding video. I cut some out and glued it onto the plastic panel. While the glue dried, I sewed the cover halfway together and I also sewed on the elastic and sorry that I totally forgot to film that. I cut off the cotton that was too much. And I also made some snips into the seam allowance so I can turn the cover easily inside out. And then I started inserting the plastic piece, which was a little bit of a struggle, but because this cotton was actually quite stretchy, it was not too bad. Then I sewed down the still open half of the cover by hand. And in my three year old YouTube career, I know that the internet is not fond of any Frankenstein outcomes. So I took a while or better said the whole weekend and covered up the edges with some bias tape. Then I sewed two 60 centimeter long ties. I folded the 11 centimeter wide strip in half and sewed together one edge and only one end. I ironed down the seam allowance. and started to turn it inside out with folding in the corners first. Then I rolled the seam into the center of the tie and formed a triangle end that I pressed down so it'll keep shape. And it'll keep shape even better when you sew the tops together. Then I marked out the seam allowance from the still open end. And I folded the seam allowance in. And put this over the elastic on the Sugata Makura. And this is where I sewed it on. And the Sukata Makura was complete. And here it is. <laughs> I can only tell you its flaws. I should have done a double layer of the plastic thing because it's 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 not strong enough to hold a Fukuro Obi. When you make this, use thicker plastic or a 3d printer or just use um, two layers of this plastic and probably in the future i will make a second layer of plastic and 
put it together but honestly it took so long to sew on the bias tape so I just want to keep it as it is for a while <laughs> be nice to me I've done this for the first time this video is probably only there to tell you what you could possibly do wrong with this and what you can do better anyway I practiced two weeks um, every night to tie this um, I have some footage me sitting on the floor and just being desperate <laughs> Yeah, usually two weeks is not enough. When you try to come up with a new obi musubi or try to make it possible to tie something by yourself, you should give yourself a few months or a year and just don't think about it all the time, by the way, because mostly you figure out how to do things right when you don't think about it. So be nice to me if it doesn't look nice. For a koken musubi, you need a fukuro obi. The sukata makura we made, some gauze that fits around your chest, a tie, as many kimono clips as possible. I think I used seven or eight. An elastic that closes with a velcro, and as always, an obi age and an obi jime. Open up the obi and start to measure six times of the sukata makura length from the tadesaki into the obi. Mark this length out with a clip. Pass the tade through the ring so you can fold it over the makura part later. And then you do something that is called hakuhida in Japanese, on top of the makura. It is basically a box pleat on the inside of the obi. And you hold this down with two clips. Cover up the makura part with the gauze. and put the obiake over it. Make sure both of them are centered to have two equally long ends to the front. Fix the obi, gauze and obiake onto the makura with the elastic. Now we take care of the te. Fold the obi in half. Measure your waist size with a tie. And transfer this length onto the obi, starting at the center of the makura ring. Add about 10 cm or 4 inches to this length and mark it out with a clip. Along this clip, you start to fold the obi under. Pull the end of the tear through the ring too. And because you usually pull it out a little too much, adjust the length of it so the clip on the other side actually becomes the edge on the other side. Then you fold the tear diagonally down towards the long side of the tear. Then you fold down the tare. I achieved a nicer look by once clipping this part onto the obimakura. Measure then one hand size from the taresaki and fold this in. Flip this part and place the top corner next to the top of the obimakura. Hold this in place with a clip. Fold then one third of its width inside and tuck it under. Take the te and pass it under the center part of the obi to the other side on the top and clip it in place. 
When your tail is longer than mine, fold it in and tuck it under the OB. Put the rest of the tade into the OB to form this asymmetrical tade on the bottom. Use the diagonally upfolded te as a guide to achieve a flat and smooth look. And of course, clip it in place. Pass the obijime through the center and hold it in place with clips too. And your kokimosibi is ready to be put on. Pass the obi to your back and lift it against your shoulder blades. Bring the ties to the front and start tying up the ties of the obi makura, then the gauze and then the obi age. Reach out to the te that looks like a tail and hold it in your right hand when you stand up. Wrap the te around your waist. Pass it under all the layers of the obi arrangement but over the ring of your sugata makura. Pull at the end to tighten the obi around your waist and fix the end of the te onto the obi around your waist with a clip. Take the obi jime and tie it on the front. And you also have to retie your obi age nicely. Take off all the clips, which could be a struggle. You could also ask for some help. And that's how a super bored kimono teacher is making the impossible obi musubi actually possible. This is definitely gonna be my outfit for New Year's for the first visit at a shrine on January the 1st. And New Year's in Japan is, by the way, the highest holidays. So you're allowed to wear your all your formal kimono, including furisode, for New Year's because you're allowed to dress up. Yay! <laughs> I really hope this video inspired you to make your own Sugata Makura. It is possible. Learn from my mistakes and make it better. If you make one, please take pictures and send them to me or share them on Instagram and wherever you can find them because I would really love to see it. I actually have a video prepared for you next week. I hope I can finish it off. I'm still sewing on the project the mock-ups and the drafting of the pattern just took me so long that i'm not quite sure if i can start sewing on monday and i finish it off until christmas and then actually editing the video i'm gonna do my best if not i already want to wish you a happy new year and thank you so much for your support this year i have 10,000 subscribers here which is i can't believe that thank you so much if you're new here, make sure to subscribe and I talk to you in my next video. Bye!